Think about this. Virtually every material thing in our world began as an idea that grew into an innovation that started small and through passion and perseverance changed the way we live. That's what this show is all about. Here at the Henry Ford, these innovations are everywhere you turn. One thing you can actually see is a relic from the dawn of the modern computer age and the birth of one of the world's biggest companies. It's hard to imagine a world without computers, but it wasn't until the 1930s that modern computers, like the ones we use now, were developed. Most early computers were huge, taking up entire buildings, weighing many thousands of pounds. And they were used for science, not for homework or games. In the 1970s, two guys named Steve ruminated on the possibility of personal computers, computers that regular people could use at home. So they went to work in their parents' garage. Steve Wozniak engineered the circuit boards, and Steve Jobs thought about how to market them. They designed everything, thought it out, went in, started plugging chips in a board, soldering every wire on, testing, looking on oscilloscopes, debugging, oh, oh my gosh, I made a mistake in the design, fix it over here and move a couple of wires, put a new chip in. They had no idea their first design would turn into one of the biggest companies on Earth. And it all started with this, the Apple One. Handmade by Wozniak, it was one of the major sparks that ignited the digital revolution. Curator of technology, Kristen Galerno, eagerly showed me the Henry Ford's rare and fully operational Apple One. This is the Apple One computer. This is the Apple One computer. It's in pieces. <laughs> is that how it came? Um, yeah, so when you bought an Apple One computer, what you essentially got was this right here. This is the motherboard. And then you could sort of link in things like, you know, a cheap TV monitor and a keyboard right here. There were other computers at the time, yeah? Yeah, yeah, there were. But this is what is known as a personal computer. This was very intuitive. You could type on this keyboard and have what you typed turn up on that TV monitor. And that's one of the first times in computing history that that was possible. Steve Wozniak was very particular about the way that he designed his circuit boards. So he laid things out to have the minimum amount of chips for the maximum amount of computing. I had one little board with only about 30 chips on it and I'm typing in programs and running them. How could a computer be so small? Nobody had ever imagined a, a full computer that could run programs could be that small. And so how much power is here? 4K. If we want to compare that to what that means to us today, 4K is a very, very short email. In 1953, there was only something like 50K of memory in the world on planet Earth. There's enough power here to send a short text, maybe. Maybe, yes. But it also could run programs, very simple mathematical programs, loops. And how many of these exist today? There were about 200 that were made total. And about 64 of those, we know where those are. But only about 15 of those are actually known to be operational, and ours is one of those. Even though this personal computer was made in 1976, it has 21st century capabilities. Could I sync my phone to this? You can, actually. It's. I'm, I was kidding. No, I'm not kidding. And when I first heard this news, it completely threw me off guard. I'm guessing that downloading just one of the 3,500 songs I have on my phone would be too much for I this. think it would be too much for it to handle, yeah. This is the seed artifact of the digital age. It's the beginning of the home computer revolution. If you want to take that revolution to the next level, you better start thinking out of the box. Oh, and it helps if you work with somebody named Steve.